President Bola Tinubu arrives in Germany for G20 Compact with African Conference in Berlin. 4,086 inmates regain freedom from correctional facilities, courtesy of an initiative of the Minister of Interior under the federal government prison's decongestion program with support from philanthropists and organizations. Details are more on news after with me with Bright Abut. You're welcome. President Bola Tinubu has arrived in Berlin, Germany to attend the G20 Compact with African Conference holding November 20, 2023. The president took off from the presidential wing of the Nandiazikwe International Airport, Abuja, about quarter past 6 p.m. Nigerian time on Saturday during the conference to be hosted by German Chancellor Olaf Scholz. President Tinubu will join other heads of state and government of CWA member countries bilateral partners as well as heads of international organizations to deliberate on the immediate enhancement of economic and business cooperation with a view to outlining concrete measures to boost investments in critical areas such as energy, trade, infrastructure and new technologies among others. The G20 CWA conference will take place alongside the fourth G20 investment summit co-hosted by the German government and German business associations. In view of President Bola Tinimu's globally recognized drive for foreign direct investment in Nigeria, the president will sustain the momentum and advance the mission further as he leads Nigerian's delegation to participate in the investment summit. ...in the Committee of Nations and that is why the invitation and it will be very, very good for the country, I believe, uh, president will discuss with so many presidents there. They will discuss the economic situation and how to invest in Nigeria and uh, also discuss the security challenges around the world and uh, opt for more diplomacy in the, instead of confrontation in, uh, in the world. President Tinubu is expected to return to the country following the conclusion of the conference. More than 4,000 inmates serving jail terms for fines and compensation, not exceeding 1 million naira, can now breathe the air of freedom. This follows payment of their fines by philanthropic individuals, groups, and corporate bodies as part of their corporate social responsibility. Clad in their jail uniforms, yet engaging in friendly banters, this was a part of the 4,068 inmates across the country set to resume their normal lives after some individuals, groups and corporate bodies raised 585 million naira to pay all their fines and compensations. More importantly, they have been equipped with skills to keep them going and out of trouble. It's not something we were expecting and then it came to us unexpected so we are very happy and we thank the government for this very, very wonderful opportunity. And we are praying and wishing that we never go back to our wrong ways again. I'm a web designer myself, so um, I also came in and learned um, art work for designs and also how to also think about my people, about agriculture. So I have plans when I go out. As these inmates begin their reintegration into society, the Minister of Interior, Olubumi Tunjojo, wants Nigerians to be more accommodating of ex-offenders and less judgmental. I implore you all to be good ambassadors of the NCOS by not returning back to the way of crime, but rather lead productive lives as responsible and low abiding citizens. I also use this opportunity to call on the larger community to receive these returning citizens with open arms. They should refrain from stigmatizing against them as it can drive them back
to offend in the law, which will further endanger the society. Prior to this exercise, available records show that Nigerian custodial centers were overcrowded by more than 30,000 inmates, a major cause of recent jail attacks. In Abuja, Victor Azu, NTA News. Internally displaced children have been given the opportunity to take action against climate change with the launch of Project One Million Children, Books and Trees in Abuja. Ruth Aguele reports that it is an initiative by the National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons to change the narrative by promoting foundational literacy on climate action and learning. These are future leaders who have gotten accustomed to climbing walls, to have a glimpse of what the future holds. But their reality stares at them in the face, under this harsh condition, as a result of climate change, and with no hope of what the future holds in building their dreams. But that is about to change with the launch of Project One Million Children, Books and Trees, a global climate change awareness campaign organized by the National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons in partnership with a non-governmental organization. The advocacy is to ensure these IDPs take climate action seriously by planting trees to save the planet for a greener and healthier Earth while securing their future. In a world where the threat of climate change is larger than life, we have a responsibility to equip our youth with the knowledge and tools necessary to combat this global crisis. Our children are not just the bearers of this legacy. They are the future of Nigeria, the architects of tomorrow. If everyone can commit to planting a tree every year, I'm sure that um, in the next few years, we'll be talking about a very green country. In the plantation of trees, which are so essential to protect and preserve the environment and also it, uh, involving children, making them aware of the issues related to climate change. Books were presented to the children as part of efforts to aid a fastest means of change through education. And knowledge acquired is expected to change their mindsets on how to preserve the climate and for a sustainable future. In Abuja, Ruth Aguele, NTA News. The Imo State off-cycle governorship election may have come and gone, but the conduct of the election still remains a subject of discussion. While some people are applauding INEC for improving the process, others say there is need to put more measures in place for a better outcome. Beatrice Anyam in this report takes a look at the challenges before the political parties in Imo State after the governorship election. Contrary to initial speculations from some quarters that the November 11, 2023 off-cycle governorship election in Imo State will be marred by insecurity, the exercise was relatively peaceful, producing the incumbent governor Hopu Zodema as winner of the pool. The outcome of the election so far has been greeted by reactions by some election monitors and political parties who feel that candidates in the just concluded election. What happened that very day was a reflection of the mandate of the people and our people spoke, at this time around they spoke in a very clear manner. To us we have now seen it as the end of the election because there's so much irregularities. We agree with uh, what the INEC said for now. We ask other political parties to shoot their sword. With the elections over, the political parties, especially the opposition, are obviously faced with the challenges of forging ahead for the next four years. Apart from the political party that is in power, is the challenge of uh, being abandoned to your fate. But most often after the election, the candidate that did not win tends to abandon the political party. And uh, of course, you are left to lick your wound. Unlike what was obtainable those days when uh, INEC, you know, used to give political parties subvention. There's no cause for alarm. We still play a part in PDP and make sure that we are stronger than anything. It is hoped that the opposition parties will contribute their quota in promoting a strong democratic governance through constructive criticisms. In a way, Beatrice Anyam, NTA News. 
A good number of women in Niger State hold different positions, a demonstration of the administration's commitment to enabling women participate actively in governance. To further enhance their decision-making skills, the wife of the Niger State Governor, Fatima Mohamed Bago, has organized a two-day training for women political office holders, aimed at also perfecting their leadership, Fatima Aliu reports. The Niger State government has demonstrated its commitment to implement the Women Affirmative Action by giving more than 130 women folks the opportunity to serve in the cabinet. There is two-day training on etiquette, protocol, security and empowerment for female political office holders organized by the wife of the governor, Fatima Mohamed Bago, however seeks to create orientation for the participants to see their involvement in governors as necessity for the growth and development of the nation. Women inclusiveness have, are able to make up uh, the 35%. So with that, I think um, they should be able to uh, stand in for women. Uh, I was given, we were given tax as first ladies from uh, the first lady of the federation to come back home and take our people along, enlighten them. Honorable Umar Mohammed Babu has been able to come up with different uh, policies as it affects women where they can key into and develop themselves in different skills. Paper presenters at the event advocates the need to comport themselves while in public places, be security conscious and ensure effective representation in politics. Fatima Aliu, NTA News. The National Working Committee of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, has resolved to do only the things that will keep the party indivisible going forward. Acting National Chairman of the Party, Ambassador Uma Damagum, made the promise after the committee's meeting in Abuja. Timothy Yusuf reports. Party unity, election review, and how to move the PDP forward dominated the meeting agenda. Acting National Chairman Umar Damagum enjoined all aggrieved members of the PDP in the recent elections to pursue redress within the ambit of the law. We should reflect, all members should reflect and reminiscence with the roles everyone played during campaigns, during elections and after. Meanwhile, the People's Democratic Party Prejo Group, under the banner of the PDP Forever Initiative at the national headquarters of the party, has called on the Undo State Governor, Rotimi Akeredolu, to resume office or transmit power to his deputy, Loki Ayedatiwa, in accordance with the 1999 Constitution as amended. The national coordinator of the group, Gideon Obandi, emphasized that since the governor has been out of office for some time, it is incumbent on him to transmit power to his deputy. As soon as you man the office of the governor or deputy governor, it is no longer a party affair. It is now a people affair. The group enjoined the people of Undo State to remain law-abiding. Timothy Yusuf, NTA News. The Nigerian Navy ship NNS Soro has recovered arms and ammunition from suspected sea robbers and arrested three suspects in the creeks of Bayoso State. Commander NNS Soro, Commodore Abdul Hakim Ulushina Ojibode, reiterated the Nigerian Navy's commitment to enhancing safety and security in the maritime domain and the prosperity of the nation. Ebinimi Zitimiola reports. The strategic directive of the chief of the naval staff and the operational mandates, the Nigerian Navy ship NNS Soro has continued to make progress in keeping the territorial waters safe. The recent is the mop up of arms and ammunition in the creeks of Bioso State. One general purpose machine gun with 100 empty links, two AK 47 assault rifles, one locally made gun, and two Tavo rifle magazines, as well as two AK-47 assault rifle magazines were recovered. Also recovered were 11 rounds of 7.62 NATO ammunition, two cartridges for pump action gun, and two 7.62 special ammunition. One high-speed boat, 
different models of handheld radios, mobile telephone handsets, as well as assorted camouflage uniforms. Commander NNS Saro appealed for continuous support from members of the public on credible information to protect lives and national assets. Ebinimi Zitimio, NTA News. It's time for us to go for a short break. Panorama continues. Please stay. Welcome back. Despite the security challenges faced by Borono State, its renowned fidelity to education was enveloped in the frenzy of academic recollections as Vice President Kashim Shetima shared memories on the significance of education and service to humanity. This was at the combined convocation ceremony of the University of Meduguri as he inspired graduates with lessons learned from the schools attributing his current position to the values instilled in him during his formative years as a student. State House correspondent Abdul Rahman Jibrila reports. It was another moment of celebration as 33,429 graduates across postgraduate and undergraduate studies met up the 24th Combined Convocation Ceremony of the 48-year-old Center of Excellence, the University of Maiduguri. 147 among the undergraduate students got first-class degrees from the regular and affiliated colleges of the institution. I'm engaging in research and acquisition of university expertise. Nigerian universities can empower their students with the necessary skills to succeed in the world. At the event, the university made the appointment of three professor emeritus and confirmment of four honorary doctorate degrees, including Nigeria's vice president, Kashim Shatima, Sheikh of Borno, Dr. Abubakar Ibn Garbay El Kanemi, the second registrar of the institution, Dr. Ahiru Bobo, and the chairman, Bua Group, Abdul Samad Rabiu. The university appreciated the support from governments at all levels, individuals, and private sectors towards the pursuit of its academic mandate. In the new atmosphere of peace, the university will continue to provide learning opportunities to the youth of the nation. Earlier, the Vice President had inaugurated the Abdul Samad Rabiu International Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship Development, a multi-billion naira edifice donated to the university. The center is expected to foster a thriving innovation and entrepreneurial ecosystem that encourages creativity, collaboration and experiment. From Maiduguri, Abraham Jibrila, NTA News. Global quest to address gender-based violence and its impact has hit a new milestone with the first year commemoration of the November 18 UN World Day for the prevention of and healing from child sexual exploitation in Syria alone. Nigerian's first lady Olure Mitinubu, who signed a commitment on behalf of Nigeria, says the country is ready to assume a leading role in protection of the girl child. State House correspondent Adeni Itaiwo reports. National flags and colors align while different tongues unite. Their message? To say no to rape and other gender-based violence by raising public awareness about the scourge and seeking help for those impacted by them. That is the spirit behind November 18 as a day dedicated by the United Nations to the prevention of and healing from sexual violence and exploitation of the girl child. He the day takes its roots from the pervasive experience of rape and gender-based violence in Syria alone and the passion of our first lady, Fatima Bio, to protect the childhood and dignity of the girl child. In the presence of our nation, we, as I speak on behalf of all the survivors, we, the survivors of, G of GBV and SGBV, stand united to raise our voice and share our experiences. Our message from now on is that you, the perpetrators, 
cannot break us down. The day holds a lot of significance for Nigeria, which co-sponsored the resolution. And Nigeria's first lady, Olura Mitsunubu, is here, saying the day must mean more than just a symbolic gesture. It is a call to action, a promise to children everywhere that we will stand up for their rights and safeguard their well-being. Equally important is the healing from the trauma of abuse. We must support survivors in their journey towards recovery. The scars of abuse run deep, but with the right resources, therapy, love and support, survivors can find the strength to heal. From the United Nations, development partners and other stakeholders, there were commitments. So as of now, about 32 states um, have passed the VAPP Act into law. While we hope that um, the remaining states will do the same. A concert to drive home the message of healing was the major highlight. History has been made here in Syria alone with the first year commemoration of the UN World Day for the prevention of and healing from sexual exploitation of girls. Of course, the expectation is that resolves taken here will offer true protection for the girl child across the world. From Freetown in Syria alone, Adeni Itaiwo, NTN News. The Office of the National Security Advisor has signed a partnership agreement with the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, and the German government for a comprehensive police reform initiative. In a statement, the head strategic communication office of the National Security Advisor, Zachary Mijinyawa, says the agreement which was sealed at a meeting between them is expected to support the Special Committee on Police Reform constituted by President Bola Tinubu during the last National Police Council meeting. The NSA reiterated President Tinubu's commitment to comprehensive police reform process anchored on trust, human rights, rule of law, and efficient public service, acknowledging UNDP's support for the modernization of the Nigerian police force. Now to sports. The Minister of Sports Development, Senator John Ino, has re-echoed the need for up-to-date and functional facilities to fully harness and develop sports in Nigeria to meet global standards. Senator Ino was speaking during an inspection tour of facilities at the Southeast Zonal Headquarters of the Ministry in Enugu. Kilechi Ochia has a report. Of sports development, who was in Enugu to have an only sports assessment of sporting facilities at the zonal office stated that standard facilities are needed to develop newly discovered sports talents from the grassroots. There's plenty that we need to do. I mean, we need to have you know, um, you know, up to you know, up to date facilities you know that are functional. We need to, what I found out is that. Um, you know, we have facilities all the same, but these facilities a lot of the times are in a state of neglect. The federal government, he also said, is collaborating with states so as to achieve greater success in sports development. You know, just so that it's not just about, you know, the zonal office visit, but that, you know, in working with the states, you know, and collaborating with the states, we can actually see how much we can achieve for sports development in our country. Among the facilities inspected include the Rangers Camp, Indoor Sports Hall, as well as the Namdi Azikiwe Stadium in Enugu. Kelechi Ochiara, NTA News. That's a wrap on News Panorama. Thanks for watching. I am Bright Ibuchu.